Hello, welcome back to my channel. So today, finally, we are going back to BIR tutorials. I will teach you guys how to file 1701A, which is your annual income tax return. Um, it's not yet due soon, mga April pa, but I'll show you guys how to do it now in case you want to do it in advance. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so first you want to put in your tax identification number. We're just going to put in a fake one. And then you put in your RDO code and your line of business. Let's put in Retail of Apparel. Then you put in your name. So, the Cruz, one. And then your registered address, one, two, three, Manila Street, Manila, Metro Manila. Okay, and then your zip code. Put in a fake zip code. And your telephone number, say 917 4. <laughs> and your email address, one at yahoo.com. Okay, next is you fill out, you choose the form you're gonna fill out. So it's 1701A. There you go. Or you can choose this one, the 2018 one. I'm gonna use this one. And click fill up. And confirm your tax identification number. Okay. All right. So now we are here. You just need to fill that up. And that leads you to the annual income tax return page. Okay. Now that we're here, you'll choose the month and the year. So it's 2021 now. So the annual income tax that you'll be filing will be for 2020. Now you have to choose if it's an amended return. So no. Short period return. No. And then you have to choose your alphanumeric tax code. So are you so are you filing for your compensation income, business income, or income from like your profession if you're a doctor or a lawyer? So right now we're gonna do business income graduated IPRA. So we'll select that. Then you input your date of birth. So let's say 0101. 2001 citizenship Filipino and if you're claiming foreign tax credits you press yes and then you put in your foreign tax number if applicable and then your civil status so if you're single select single and if you're married then you have to indicate if your spouse has an income because you also have to declare your spouse's income but for now, we'll pretend like we're all single. After Valentine's Day, lol. Okay, and is your income exempt from income tax? So you need to select yes if your income is exempt from income tax. But for now, to simplify things, we'll say that your income tax is, you're not income tax exempt. So select no. And is it subject to preferential rates? And then no again. Um, if it is, subject to um, income tax exemption. You have to press yes and there's a separate file that you need to fill out. So now we'll see, okay, so it's graduated rates and method of deduction. So if you're BMBE, you have to choose itemized deduction. So this will depend on what you chose early when you registered your business. Next, this part will be automatically filled out later except for the interest, surcharge, and compromise. So you only need to fill out this part if you filed late. So hopefully none of you filed late so you don't have to pay for a penalty. Okay, so and then you attach, um, you indicate the number of attachments. So if you have withholding tax credit, then you need to attach that to this form. Then when you're done here, select next. Okay, so this part is about your spouse. So like I mentioned, if you have a spouse, you have to put in their information here. 
but if none, we will just skip this whole part. Next would be the computation of tax. So for this Schedule 1, it is the cross compensation, income, and tax withheld. So this is for people who are being paid by their employers with compensation and their employers are also withholding tax. So if you fall under this, this is the part that you need to fill out. And then here is taxable compensation income for Schedule 2. And then finally in Schedule 3, which is what we will be doing in the example today, is taxable business income. So if you're doing graduated rates, you fill out 8 to 24. So you start here. But if you're doing 8% flat income tax rate, you only need to fill out 25 to 30. So since we're doing graduated rates, we will do um, numbers, 80, uh, uh, numbers 8 to 24. Okay, so here you're going to put in your total sales for the year. So let's say you earn 1 million. There. And then if you have any sales returns, allowances, or discounts, so let's say you gave people like a 10 thousand okay so discount and then you have to put in your cost of sales so these are the direct costs so for example it's a product it would be the materials and the labor that goes into your direct cost or your cost of sales so let's say your cost of sales is 20% of your total sales so that's 200,000 Okay, next is, so this will automatically compute for your gross income in number 12, so that's 790, which is 1 million minus 210. And then we go into 13 to 16, so these are automatically computed based on um, part 5, schedule 4, which is something you will fill out later. And then if you have any non-operating income, like income that you earn from your investment, you can put them here. Like you have to indicate where they came from and how much in total. Then after that, click next. Okay, so this part 3B is the one for the 8% flat income tax rate um, filing. So we'll skip that and here is schedule 4 this is where we will itemize our deductions so it will show us like for example here like um, how much did you spend on charitable and other contributions depreciation fringe benefits um, rent okay so let's say for rent you spend um, let's say you spend 100,000 and then salaries and wages let's see so if in order to put in salaries and wages you have to your employees must be registered so if they're not registered you can put them here next would be your fringe benefits so the um, like bigas medical and then you have depreciation so if you bought equipment you can depreciate it here so let's say your depreciation is ten thousand and you made charitable contributions ten thousand but more research and development you can put in 50 and then transportation let's say you spend like 20. Taxes and licenses, say 30. Yeah. Okay, so if all if you have like janitorial and messenger messengers, like you hire them, um, they should be subject to withholding taxes. So you can put that here. Professional fees, like if you hired a consultant, security, um, all of these, you should have um, issued a withholding tax.
and you should have remitted that withholding tax to PIR. So if you don't have any, just leave that blank. And then if you go back, you will see that this is already here. Like all of the things that you put in is already here in number 13 and 16. So it automatically computed for that. And then it will also compute for your net income. So here your net income is 570,000. Next. Um, so this special uh, this special allowable itemized deduction is for um, yeah, if you have any special itemized deduction. So you put that here for you and here for your spouse. So if you had a net operating loss carryover, so if last year you were not profitable, you can put that here. So now we just click next. And we are in the final page of the um, IPR. So now what we do is we go through the summaries. So for here, this is a summary of your income tax due. For this person, it's 72500 um, But then you also have to deduct the amount that you paid for the past three quarters. So let's say in the past three quarters, you were already able to pay around 50000 There. So, it will become like a credit to your um, total tax payments for this um, filing. If you also have any um, income tax, that, uh, if you also have any creditable tax withheld using the 2307 for the fourth quarter, then you need to put that in here also. And for part eight which is tax relief availment you only need to fill this out if you selected yes earlier with the special rate or the tax and tax exemption so if you go back to your first page um you will see the total tax due here Okay, so here, so you'll see the total tax due is 72500 less your total tax credits or payments, which is 50000 the ones that you paid in the previous quarters, and your total tax payable, which is 22500 less the portion of your tax payable allowed for second installment. So if you are allowed to have second installment to be paid on or before October 15, then you need to put that here. But otherwise, you just leave it blank. And then the amount of tax payable, like I mentioned, if you have penalties, if you file this late, then you need to fill this out also. And that's it. So here is your total. So once you're done, you just need to validate and then once you're done validating, submit a final copy. You should receive an email from BIR acknowledging your submission. So if they were able to receive your filing, then they will send you an email. If you do not receive an email, please don't forget to call BIR and inform them that you were not able to receive and tell them when you were able to file this um, filing. After that, you can go to your accredited bank or to GCash to pay for this. I have a separate tutorial on how to pay for your income taxes or pay BIR via GCash. And I'll put the link over here. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot. Um, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video to other people if you found it useful. And that's it for this week. I hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye.